We've all heard the story of a schoolboy at rugby school in 1823 picking up the ball and running with it during a football match. While there is very little evidence to back up this romantic story of rugby's humble beginnings, it is clear the sport has evolved quite substantially over the years, particularly as the professional era took a grip of the game. With the need to bring in fresh revenue and reach new audiences, clubs and the RFU have travelled far and wide to maximise their pockets and gain exposure for the game. So today, I present to you the 10 strangest grounds English rugby has been played. Okay, let's get started then. The home of Manchester United, Old Trafford is one of the most famous grounds in the world of football. It does also host the grand final of Rugby League in England. Did you know it actually hosted two Rugby Union internationals? The ground got its first taste of Test Rugby on November the 22nd, 1997, when a New Zealand side featuring the legendary Jonah Lomu recorded a 25-8 win over England. Argentina were England's opponents when rugby returned to Old Trafford 11 years later with England winning 37-15 and Matt Banahan scoring on his debut. Loftus Road, London, home to football team Queen's Park Rangers. Loftus Road was the former home of Premiership team Wasp between 1996 and 2002. Wasp moved to the stadium as part of the deal in which Chris Wright took control of both Wasp and QPR. Loftus Road is rumoured to be making a comeback as a rugby ground in the not too distant future, with Ealing Trailfinders considering it as their home ground should they gain promotion to the Premiership. McAlpine Stadium, now Kirkley Stadium. Despite Huddersfield not being a strong rugby union area, the stadium has been used for four full cap international rugby union matches. It hosted three qualifying matches for the 1999 Rugby World Cup and one match in the pool. England have played there twice when they beat Netherlands 110-0 and Italy 23-15. As part of England's disastrous 2015 World Cup campaign, uh, we won't talk about too much, they played a game at their Etihad Stadium in Manchester as they overcame Uruguay 60 points to 3. Just over 50,000 people watched England finish their doomed World Cup campaign with a 10-try defeat of Uruguay. Gateshead International Stadium Newcastle hosted two games at the Gateshead International Stadium over two consecutive weekends against Leicester and Bath in the 1997-98 season. The game against Bath was Newcastle's highest attendance record of 11,595 until only a few seasons ago when they broke the record when they played Northampton at St James's Park. They used the Gateshead Stadium a further three times the following season but the attendance has dropped considerably with the highest being just over 4,000 attendees. In 2016, Premiership Rugby launched an international fixture with the hope to take the sport mainstream in America. London Irish were the first hosts of this landmark game against Saracens at the Red Bull Arena in New Jersey. With it being a Six Nations weekend though, Saracens were without many of their big names, but the event was still seen as a success and a start into Premiership Rugby's move across the pond. London Olympic Stadium In 2017, Saracens announced that they would host their annual Derby Day clash against Harlequins at the London Stadium. This was the first time since 2010 that the fixture did not take place at Wembley. The match ended in a 24-11 win for Saracens in front of a crowd of 55,000. The game at the stadium will most likely be remembered for Ugo Monia's incredible drop goal from the sideline before kickoff. Oh, what a beauty. On Saturday the 16th of September 2017, Premiership Rugby continued their journey into America. With high expectations of an 18,500 crowd sellout at the Talon Energy Stadium in Philadelphia, unfortunately just over 6,000 turned up to watch Saracens beat Newcastle 29-7. The 5pm kickoff location and scheduling of the game on a Saturday, the same day as college football, proved to be key factors in the failure of this journey to take the sport stateside. Since this event, Premiership Rugby has not revisited America with no word of any plans to go back soon. After Sale started the 2010-11 season to two poorly attended games, Sale responded by proposing a big game style match against London Irish at Bolton's Reebok Stadium. Unfortunately, Sale's bid to showcase rugby union in the North West was undermined by the FA Cup, with three of the North West clubs at Wembley in semi-final action. Sale had hoped for more than 20,000 to turn up at the home at Bolton Wanderers as they looked to develop their fan base, but just over 16,000 watched the game as London Irish beat Sale 34 20. And finally, Wembley Stadium. Between 2009 and 2017, Wembley Stadium was used regularly by Saracens for Premiership Rugby and Heineken Cup matches. England have also played there previously in a friendly against Canada on the 17th of October 1992 as their regular home stadium of Twickenham was undergoing redevelopment. 
But one particular interesting note is Wales played their Five Nations and Autumn International home matches at Wembley while their new stadium was being built in Cardiff. Wales actually hosted England at Wembley in 1999, with Wales being the home team. Wales won that game 32-31 in the last ever game of the Five Nations. This defeat meant that England didn't win the Grand Slam. So there we go then, 10 strange grounds that English rugby has been played at. Can you think of any others? Let us know in the comments. If you're new to Fab Rugby, make sure you hit subscribe and like this video, and I'll see you guys soon for the next video.